Hello YouTube, I'm Jack Clark, and of course this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Britain, coming to you with another video, hello, how are you? Now of course, as you can tell from the title of today's video, today's going to be an interesting video, and you know what that means, movie mad. Now of course, in a previous video by Mega Capital G, he brought up the topic of boycotting Konami. Now this has been an interesting notion that has been battered around the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, like a freaking town bicycle, but now, of course, nothing's really come towards this idea of boycotting Konami, simply because as much as we hate it when Konami produces a freaking product that sucks balls, i.e. Gold Series 5, no one actually does anything, because as much as you don't like it, we're not going to actually stop buying their product or something like that, because everyone knows if, if we stop buying their product, they would actually do something, but that's not happening because obviously we're buying the product, which then in turn justifies the crappy product. And now of course Mega Capital G did bring, in, bring up in his video that of course we should not stand for this really, because crappy product, if they, they'll keep on making crappy product and people will be, keep on buying crappy product, and of course the majority of competitive players that do not like the crapness, I'm going to say crap too much in this video, we of course won't be heard because, oh look, we're getting a lot of profit from this product, let's do more of these! Whilst the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! community is going <laughs> Yes, so of course, as you can tell from my disposition at the moment, I'm not particularly pleased with Gold Series 5 Haunted Mine either, but, but, of course, my point of view has always been to look at it from both sides. Now, let's look at it from the side of Konami. Now, Konami, of course, is a business. Business needs to optimise profits by creating goods and services, and this is one of those goods. Now, of course, there may not be any reprints here that are particularly useful in terms of wild competitive playing, but let's go think, let's rewind to previous Gold series, of course, where we had Blackluster Soldier on board at the beginning as a reprint where everyone was like, what the fuck is this reprint? It's banned! And, of course, became unbanned. Now, of course, there are no banned cards in Gold Series 5 Haunted Mine. However, there are cards that do deserve our attention simply because they may not be relevant now, but they will be relevant later. Of course, the most obvious ones here in mind will be, of course, the Naturia Beast and Naturia Barkion. Now, of course, many people are like, ah, oh, for God's sake, these reprints are lovely and well overdue, of course. However, just like Herald of Perfection and Formula Synchron, they are well overdue, but past the point of even being relevant in competitive play. However, with Beast and Barkion, obviously, we have what was the one deck that they were only competitively viable or relevant in? What is it? I think they got, like, a structure deck release coming up soon, and a reprint of their of their ace card in a special edition set. Yes, of course, Six Samurai of getting their structure deck, and they're going to become a competitively viable deck again, because, of course, they've got some more support in their structure deck in the form of Shadow of the Six Samurai. Now, as much as I really do not like the idea that this is all foreshadowing and they need to do these reprints because, well, we need new cards, but, of course, this is for Six Samurais, and we really shouldn't be surprised by this. Of course, Naturia, Beast, and Barkian are probably going to be the only really tough-to-get cards of a Six Samurai deck, and they've already just eliminated them. So, obviously, they want to kind of saturate the f the freaking meta with Samurais, for some reason. And I can't say I complain, because a well-played Torrential Tribute, of course, will stop Sam's, but, of course, people don't want to see oversaturation of one deck in a in any one uh, format, simply because it's boring to play over the same deck over and over again. So, of course, we know that's why the Beast and the Barkion are there. Of course, stuff like Herald of Perfection and frickin' Formula Synchron? Not so much. Of course, we've got Herald of Perfection. If you'd given me Herald of Perfection reprint in Ghost Skull Rare last format, I would have jumped on your nuts. But, of course, no. No, not, th not now, because... Obviously, it's not really competitively viable now, as, as much as it was a very good deck of its time, but it's not anymore. And, of course, this reprint, as much as it will mean that I will be able to pick up a playset of them myself quite easily, to what end? These reprints aren't doing much. Of course, Formula Synchron also being one of the cards that got a reprint. And what were those two cards that were the best way of utilising uh, Formula Synchron? Oh yeah, they're fucking banned, Konami. What the hell? The reason why we want Formula Synchron, why we wanted reprints of Formula Synchron, is of course, the rare was like £15 at the time, and of course, the German Ultra was a fucking German Ultra, obviously, so much more expensive. So of course we wanted a reprint so we could use it alongside our glow-up bowl and spores. Yeah, so you kind of take those away and you gave us the Formula Synchron really easily, but it's not relevant anymore, so that sucks balls. 
Next off, of course, we've got the Destruct. Oh my god, we've got Graffa, we've got Hyperion, and we've got number 39, Utopia. Now, of course, with Graffa and Hyperion being the most closest, they're the previously ultra rares as in structure decks. Now, of course, everyone knows that an ultra rare is the closest you can get to a gold rare without it being a gold rare, so why the hell they were reprinting it as a gold rare is beyond me. But most, most of it really is the point that, of course, they're really freaking easy to get, and I think the Dark World deck and the Hyperion deck are probably still in circulation. I can go to my card, local card shop or wherever, and I could probably still pick up a copy of Under, the Gates of the Underworld or Lost Sanctuary really quite cheaply, if not for recommended retail price. So the reason why they're reprinting them in um, gold, rare... It can't be money, because I'm, they're not getting mine. That's not They're not getting mine. Next off, we of course we have Fable Grimro, which of course I love. I love Fable. They're one of my favorite decks, like ever. I've got my freaking Fable deck here. It's freaking awesome, inconsistent as fuck, but of course it's a nice deck. Of course, having a gold rare Grimro means oh yay, I get a interesting reprint for my deck. However, but of course Grimro is available as a secret rare and as a freaking DT holographic. So giving them a go. Gold Rare Grimrock isn't really going to do much, unless they are randomly going to give us random reprints or some new support in a future set, at which one I'm like, yay, Gold Rare Grimrock, but until then I can't really see that actually happening, because if that were the case they would have reprinted some of the other fables in commons or in more gold slots. So I don't really think that's the case, so it's quite a random reprint. However, I do have a theory that it's literally just going to be because, oh look, Grimrock, look, she's got, she's got tits, she's a girl. She may have plumage, but look, maybe they're going down the tour guide kind of um, way of um, selling this product. I don't know, but to be fair, Grimo isn't really one of the smartest things um, to reprint ever. To be fair, because you could, as much as people would overprice this card because oh, it's the Stratos of Fabled and it's got tits. Um, Really freaking easy to get as it goes. So next off, I'm gonna go with the commons. Now the commons are probably the most interesting part of Gold Series 5 Haunted Mine, simply because of the whole, um, let's think of it back what, what in previous Gold Series, where we've had, of course, in previous ones, we've had reprints of the Amazon S's, at which point, of course, we had the renaming of frickin' um, Amazon Archer to Amazon S Archer, so it's part of the Archer type, they've done this with other cards like What Kid, formerly known as a Skillio Hero 2 or something, and of course, that's very good, it's good for the game, we need this. In today's, in this set as well, we've had something like that, of course, Hidden Book of Spells, originally was that, but now it's been reprinted in Gold Series 5 as Hidden Spellbook. Of course, this is foreshadowing the, this is going to be foreshadowing the archetype, ma the magical archetype and the Book of Spells archetype that will be coming out in Return of the Doorless. Now, in addition to this, like I said, the Amazon S has got a reprint a while ago, and shortly after, of course, we had the new Amazon S support. So what kind of archetype do we have included in Gold Series 5 that could potentially go down this route. Of course, I'm talking mainly of the Dark Scorpions. Now, the Dark Scorpions, of course, have been a fan favourite for many, many, many years. Of course, the reprints that they are giving us of the Dark Scorpions, we no one really cares about. However, of course, we've got Don Zalug there, which is a nice reprint, I guess, but when I said that they have started giving us reprints which weren't even competitively viable, I don't think this has been competitively viable in, like, ten fucking years or something. But, of course, it's very nice to have for, for nostalgia's sake. However, of course, like I said, Amazon has now got um, support afterwards. Minimal support, mind you. But, of course, Dark Scorpions could go down this route away again, and they may have some Dark Scorpion support planned for us in future. I don't want to find uh, freaking... Uh, I know it's kind of a fool's game to find patterns with Konami products, but, of course, this is always a thought, and it's always a possibility. But of course, that's just my opinion, and I've been rambling on for nearly 10 minutes. But of course, I would love to hear your opinions on Gold Series 5 and 14. Mind you, like the set, do you not like the set? Do the new Ghost Gold Rares look as good as you like? Are you going to get some? Are you going to buy this product, mostly? And of course, tell me your opinions on the choices that Konami have put into this set. So of course, I'm Jack Clark, and of course, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Britain coming to you with more videos as soon as I can. But of course, until then, goodbye.